because that's when the fish would be out. And so as the rays of the morning begin to hit the surface of the sea, I think something happened. There was one fish swimming around, and he says, ooh, did you hear that? And he asked his, for, his, his fish buddy, yo, man, did you just hear that? No, I didn't hear anything. What you hear? I think the creator just said he, he needs to use me today. And I can see him talking to his buddy, and his buddy is like, really? Like, the creator of all things, did he? He spoke to you? Yeah, man. I think he spoke to me. Oh, man, I'm excited. Because if the creator said he has to use you, that means he's going to enlarge your territory. That means he's going to prosper you more. That means that you're going to get way more blessings. That means any prayer you've ever asked for, man, he's going to fulfill that thing. Man, that means you're about to get a raise. You're going to have more children. That means you're going to get a bigger house, man. Is he actually going to pick you up and put you in a different seat? says, no, bro, you won't believe what he just said. He said that there's about to be a net lowered over there, and he wants me to swim into it. Oh, man, I can see his buddy now. I'm like, no, nah, bro, you tripping now, man. You tripping. <laughs> you tripping, boss. You tripping. What you mean he told you to swim in the net? Yo, I promise you, dude. He just said he has need to use me today. And there's going to be a net that falls down right over there. And he needs me to swim into it. And that one fish begins to spread the word. Yo, God's, God spoke to me and the creator said he has need to use me today. And everybody gathers around and he begins to tell the story. And then people look at him awkward when he says, yo, there's a net over there. And the creator wants us to go and swim into it. And nobody believes him. Because remember, it's, it's daytime. They know when the fishermen's nets go up. They saw the last net go up a couple hours ago. There's not supposed to be another net let down for about 23 hours now. And then all of a sudden, they see something sinking. And they're like, whoa. Maybe he's right. And so then the whole swirling begins. And friend grabs friend, and more fishes come together. And they're all coming together to swim into this net. And let me tell you, it is not something that everybody is, oh, no, I don't want to, uh, man. No, all of them keep repeating, the creator wants to use me today. The creator wants to use me today. And they tell their friends, they tell their family, they run around, the creator wants to use me today. The creator wants to use me today. And now all of them are singing together, and it's like a choir, a chorus and more fish are gathering, and, and everything is building. All of the, the momentum, all of the enthusiasm that comes, knowing that the Creator wants to use me today. And they're all happy, and they're all swimming, and they're all celebrating, and that's when the signal goes off, and all of them head about 60 miles per hour straight into this net, and they crash into it, and they keep scurrying, and they keep celebrating, and they keep chanting. Creator wants to use me today. But don't let the romantic part of the story keep you from the reality of that net being hoisted above water. And now every fish who was so excited is now up against a contradiction. Why would the Creator call me into so much pain? As each fish in that net now begins to grasp for air, cannot breathe any longer. All of that excitement seems to fade away. It just kind of washes away with every slowing breath as all of those 153 fish are in a net now. They're not there because they were stupid. They're not there because they didn't listen. They're actually there because they were obedient. Every single fish listened to Jesus, and now they're being hoisted above water. One after one begins to slowly die, as now it's being set in the boat. And man, let me tell you, all of these fish are rolling over and flopping around, wondering, man, I hope I heard the right thing. Because I swear the Creator said He has need to use me today. 
says, God needs family. God needs fish. And he sent me to raise up the testimony of this, these fish. Somebody to stand in some hall, somewhere, or some church in front of hundreds and listeners and make sure we don't forget the sacrifice of these fish. Because these were the disciples. The word of God says that they did not know who Jesus was. They did not know all until these fish ran and jumped into a net. And it's when the fish were in the net that who Jesus was became clear. See, all of these 153 fish actually won over the disciples, but they did not do it through a sermon. They did not do it through an appeal. They never baptized one person. But let me tell you, when their life became a living sacrifice, when their life became a visible witness, all of a sudden, people looked at the shore and said, hey, that's Jesus. And God is calling CPC to do the same. Not to be a people that are simply pandering after Christ, wondering what will he do for me next, but instead to be a people that follow Christ wherever he goes, wondering what you can do for him next. How you can sacrifice, how you can lay it on the line, how you can sell out. It's not about all of this religiosity that we carry. Let me tell you who is going to be saved. The people who are going to be saved one day are the people whose lives line up with these fish. Individuals that did not hold on to anything, but sacrificed everything, all because the Creator appeared to them one day and said, hey, I want to use you. I don't know who you are. I don't know how this sermon is impacting your life, but I definitely know the Holy Spirit has sent me here to witness on behalf of these fish, to inspire you to hopefully stoke up the flame of desire within your heart that in 2014 when many are trying to grab whatever they can get God is looking for people who will let go of all they have be fish someone's been moved and you're like man I, I want to be a fish but I, I just don't know if I had the courage I want to invite you to come to the front I'm going to pray over you because courage and boldness is something according to Acts chapter 4 that must be prayed for. We don't innately have it. But you look at the testimony of these fish and you have just been inspired today. There's something in you that wants to be one of these fish. That wants to be able to put it on the line and sell out completely and totally for Jesus Christ. But you want to ask for the courage to do so. Would you come forward? I know there is, there is many among us who have had this desire. And you want God to give you that courage. Listen, it's going to be exciting at times, but then there are going to be other times when the net begins to be hoisted above the surface of the sea and you feel like you can't even breathe anymore. But just say, God, I want to be that obedient. I want to be that disciple. See, the disciples weren't ready for this when they saw it. But Acts tells the story that each of those disciples who were here that day became a fish. For it says they all gave their life for the gospel truth. They all were called to swim 60 miles per hour straight into a net. In response to the fact that the creator says, I want to use you today. And family of time is soon coming. When martyrdom will again come out into the world as a needed witness and testimony that God is real and that he's worth dying for. Would you come? Somebody needs to accept this. These fish died so that we could share this story today. They gave their lives so that other people could look at them and say, hey, that's Jesus over there. And that testimony is still alive here today. If you've responded, I just want you to hold out your hands in a comfortable position. Just, just to hold out those hands. Show God your palms. Show him that there's nothing in there, but you're waiting to receive from him what you're asking for. God, look at our hands today. We stretch out our hands because although with some angst and fear, we want to give you our hands. 
God, we don't know what you want us to do in order to win the next person. We're not even concerned about that. Right now, we're concerned with the fact that these hands have too many chains on them. These hands are shackled to too many idols. There are too many concerns that we have that if that thing or that object, that item is threatened, that we would then close these hands and say, no, you can't use us this way because then we'll lose this. Because then we'll lose that. You can't use us this way. But, oh, God, we have been so inspired by these fish. God, they never close their fins. They just use those fins to go even faster towards the purpose you had made them for. And, God, we accept it. They were not made to just go out in this blaze of glory and fame and fortune. A matter of fact, they were simply dragged up onto the sea. God, they were placed in the sand, and most likely they were sold for profit. But somehow, God, I know that you love those fish. You love them, God. And I believe you cried a tear for them as you saw their willingness to listen to their creator. And that's where we want to be, oh God. We want to be so dedicated to you. That even if the end result is not fame, or fortune, success, or prestige, you find us swimming as fast as we can towards a net just because you want to use us. Make us fish, oh God. Give us the heart of fish. Please, oh God, see our hands. Take our feet. Give us the courage to follow you wherever you go. I pray for those who are right here. God, they have come as a public expression of their faith. Not only be with them, but empower them to stand boldly and courageously when it's not popular. When negative consequences will come because of their stand. I pray that you would anoint their head right now with oil, oh God, so that their cup runs over. For we believe that surely goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our life. There's going to come a day when we'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We thank you for sending us this testimony. Please seal the word, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, let everyone say amen. Amen. You may return to your seat. Can we just praise God for the word today? Amen. And today you have a further opportunity to become fish by making a difference in the lives of our young people by grabbing one of the white or gold envelopes that's in the back of the pews and making your offering today to help create in the 21st century a group of young people who will be going out and sacrificing for God. For our online viewers, you can make your donation at www.cpcsda.org and click the home and school department. The deacons will now take up the offering.
Father, we thank you, dear Lord, for blessing our service today. Please be the offering, dear Father, that will help change lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now that's a sermon we will remember. Amen. Amen. Such a, such a blessing, Pastor. Thank you so much. Wow. Uh, someone left this. It's got a key at the end of it, so I think you're a New York Giants fan. God help you there, but... Uh, everybody needs prayer for something. Yeah. We have it up here for you. Now, there is a meal to follow this service. The meal is for our and let's thank the choir again for their wonderful ministry to us. Uh, we will serve uh, our pastor, of course, and our guest choir and our honoree first downstairs. And then um, the meal is open to all. And I understand the meal is being provided for us by Washington Adventist University. They're providing the meal. Uh, so the meal will follow, and then after that, at 4 p.m., maybe one of the most important uh, aspects of the day will be open house, and the following institutions will be represented for you parents to come, sit and talk, maybe even get uh, materials uh, that will help you in decision-making. We'll have three universities represented, Washington Adventist University, Southern University, and Adventist University of Health Sciences. What do you say? They'll be here today at 4 uh, to uh, meet with you. And then we'll have eight secondary schools. Only Adventist Prep School, Tacoma Academy, Blue Mountain will be here, Spencerville Academy, Vienna Adventist Academy, DuPont, John Devins Andrews, and Sligo Adventist School will all be here this afternoon at 4 just to meet with parents. Isn't that wonderful? Now, we have to tip our hats to Brother Mills. I mean, he really, really... And we say, without hesitation, and you can take the word back to Nashville, that the best home and school leader in the world is here at CPC. Um, he just takes things and, and makes it so nice. So you're going to have a total of 11 educational institutions here at what time? Four. Four. Uh, to just meet with, browse, and uh, get materials, maybe have a conversation that might be determinative for you uh, as a parent. And then at 5.15 is the concert featuring, featuring again uh, the Tacoma Academy Choir, Marvelous, Only Prep uh, uh, String Orchestra, Only Prep Bell Choir, Vienna Bell Choir, and our own um, Madison, is it Madison Butler? Madison, yes, okay. So uh, quite an afternoon planned uh, for you. Now for our CPCers going into the week, remember the business meeting tomorrow morning at 10. And then at 11, I'm going to meet with the uh, Children's Ministry Search Committee at 11. So uh, two, two meetings that are important uh, for me to be with uh, leaders of our church. First, our business meeting uh, at 10, and then at, two, uh, at, at 11, the uh, meeting with the search committee. Uh, neither meeting will be very long, but very, very important meetings. March 22nd, here at CPC on the Alexandria campus, uh, will be the uh, ministry fair, ministry fair. Members of this church will get a chance to sign up for various ministries taking place. And then April 12, uh, let that begin to grow in your mind. That's the big uh, 
pre-Easter celebration involving all the Seventh-day Adventist churches in Northern Virginia. We'll be at the Hilton Chapel. Dr. Barry Black will be our guest speaker, and we'll be fellowshipping all day, learning, and just having a good time. What date did I say? April 12th. There'll be no church here. Every Seventh-day Adventist church in Northern Virginia will be closed on that day, and we'll be meeting at the Hilton Chapel. So these are big things t taking place you want to be setting your minds toward and uh, be blessed. Uh, Pastor, would you come, please? We appreciate your ministry, and we want your wife to know that you really did come and do something, so <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> what a blessing. Shall we stand as we close? Uh, Brother Mills, anything I missed? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Stick with the boss. Let's stand together as we close our service. Again, let's let our guests go downstairs and eat first, and the rest of us can follow. Somebody has claimed it. This is your key? Your son's key. All right, Anginelli, that's great. All right, good way to end the service. The keys are found. Sabbath and the ushers will usher you out. Hallelujah.